Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. My name is Jay Maloney, Senior Consultant, Augmented and Virtual Reality within Air France, KLM. Yes, this is a strange way to do a presentation. It's the first time for me that I've been doing a presentation in this way. I've done lots of presentations and lots of expos over the years. I've never liked this. It's a challenge. And I think also an indication of our new way of working and how things are changing. So it's a good experiment. We as an airline are suffering at the moment from not only Corona, which is having this, of course, a devastating impact in the way we do our business. 95% of our flights um, at the moment are not flying. Um, but as an industry, the future is very challenging for us. Our traditional way of working is flying people from A to B. This is what we did. This is what we've done for 100 years. The KLM is 100 years old this year. And that's been a very, very successful business model for us always. It's worked very well. Now we've made a lot of profit in this and we've contributed to society. But we see that things are changing and changing very, very fast. So with that in mind, we as an airline decided to experiment and investigate a few of the, the emerging technologies which are starting to come online now. We're talking about virtual, augmented, and artificial intelligence technologies. We also decided to focus on three aspects within our, in our company value chain. We're talking about the employee journey, which, which in theory is digitalization of the things that we do. We're talking about our customer journey, which is how can we get our customers more involved and how can we, with these technologies, give them a better experience. But we're also talking about the disruptive technologies. Where the moment at the moment for, for us as an airline, there is not a business, but it could affect our business in the future, or maybe also be an enhancement. I'm talking about things like virtual traveling, I'm talking about the uh, telepresence or augmented telepresence. These are all technologies which will, without a doubt, have an effect on the way we do our business in the future, and it's already having an effect on some things. So as a company, we have a challenge. We've accepted the challenge and we are looking into looking to see what we can do about this and how can we utilize these technologies to make them work for us. Yeah, I've got it. Okay. No. okay. So the areas of interest for the KLM are autonomous robots. We are looking in our hangars, our aircraft hangars, to see how we can use robots uh, mixed together, of course, with um, artificial intelligence to see if there are areas which we can um, utilize this technology regarding maintenance. We do a lot with big data, of course, as an airline, we have a huge client base, and we are always collecting data to make sure that we can offer our customers a customization uh, experience if possible. Um, we've also, we're also looking at pilotless transport, to believe it or not. It's, 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 it's something which is, which is very, very in the very early phases, but it's something which is interesting for us. Uh, Internet of Things, I don't have to explain what, what, what this is. These are things which, which also could be interesting for us. But the area which is very interesting for us at the moment is the XR areas. And that's augmented in virtual reality and artificial intelligence. These are a few of the experiments which we are checking and looking into at the moment. We're looking into virtual traveling. And virtual traveling, I'm not talking about 360 videos. I'm not talking about putting a headset on your head and having a static um, uh, experience. 
We're talking about real life, real time troubling. We're talking about sending people into the field or sending equipment into the field with cameras in hats and cameras in t-shirts to see if we can actually utilize the technology to enhance our ticket again. Telepresence. Now we all know what Zoom is like. We all know what Blue Jeans is like and Skype and all these programs, which we're all using at the moment within the situation which we're all in. I don't know about you, but but I'm exhausted doing these two-dimensional tel telepresence sessions all the time. It's it's difficult. It feels like you're on an old CB radio where you know you have to wait until somebody says over, you're able to talk. It's difficult and it's 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 energy something. As a company at the moment, we are spending a lot of time and a lot of energy regarding telepresence in virtual and augmented reality. We started to look into this technology maybe uh, one and a half years ago, where we built our own environment, we scanned our own meeting rooms, we actually scanned ourselves. So we were 3D avatars. Um, uh, we worked together with, uh, with TCS, uh, a company in India, to, to build this uh, environment. Uh, and the experiment was, was very successful uh, to a certain degree. Um, eventually, we as an airline decided we're an airline, we're not a software company, so we decided we want to look for other uh, suppliers and partners. Uh, presently, we are partnering with, with uh, Glue, uh, which is a, a, a software company from Finland, who make uh, a very, very good uh, uh, software platform for collaboration. Uh, I'll show you uh, a film within uh, within a few minutes, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But for us, telepresence is not only uh, being in a room with somebody virtually, but it's also the collaboration, the brainstorming, able to write on a whiteboard, able to make objects, able to design objects in, in a 3D environment. Um, and it's also a way of creating a new way of working. Uh, a good example is um, when the lockdown here in Holland stops, and we expect it to stop in about a month, um, our buildings are only able to, uh, to, 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 to uh, house 40% of the present persons in employment within the KLM. So we have 60% of our employees who have to find a different way to work. We know that 2D telepresence works for some things, but virtual telepresence works for more things for us. So we, as uh, as, a, as a as a company, are really really investing a lot of time and energy within telepresence of virtual and augmented reality. And for us, it's working very well, and we are happy with it. That's a, from the employee perspective. But we also see opportunities for telepresence from uh, the customer perspective. We think that it could definitely be an enhancement to our products within the future, where you just not only buy a ticket for a journey, but you can also buy um, a, a virtual ticket for a journey and talk virtually to people. Um, the, 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 the KLM motto is fly responsibly, and we really mean this. We want you to fly if you need to fly. Um, so these tools will enable us to um, to make that message uh, real and 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 to also to to expand our 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 how do you say that our our value chain and our, our customer offering so we're very very interested in telepresence at the moment a very nice product for us we are doing a lot with the virtual reality onboarding so we we actually call this pre-boarding that's not onboarding of customers in the plane but this is onboarding of new employees within the company. We want to get the people used to the company before they actually set one foot into the company. We, uh, we have lots of people from different nationalities and different countries coming to us all the time. And we want to make this transition as smoothly as possible. So we have scanned all our buildings. Um, we actually invite people to take place, uh, to take a part in, in meetings. Um, uh, even before they're um, in the company, so they can get used to, to the Dutch dress sense and the Dutch way of, of meeting and, and, and doing business. Um, 
And th this is something which is uh, very interesting for us and, and it's starting to deliver results now. So it's an experiment that's actually becoming very serious. Uh, another um, uh, aspect of, of onboarding is also the onboarding and training. Um, a good example is we have virtualized our cockpits for trainee pilots uh, because our flight sim time is very expensive. So we've decided to actually virtualize uh, a few of our Embraer's and our Boeing's um, is to make sure that the pilots get, fam that they get familiar with the cockpit before they actually go into a flight sim or a real cockpit. It reduces our training time for the pilots to about 30%, which is, which is very, very interesting for us as a company. Again, using virtual reality. Um, a good example, a good, um, uh, um, good opportunity within this, uh, in this is, of course, that we also are able to upgrade and update on the fly. So if, if, if pilot manuals change quickly, then we can change them also very quickly in the system. Virtual reality entertainment system. We want people in our planes to put a headset on and to be involved in their own world. We've done various experiments with this within, the, within our, our, our planes with the, with the customers and with test subjects, and it works quite well. There are, of course, a lot of complications still to get over. Who's going to clean the headset? What about the data on the headset? Is it safe? Is it, is it okay? Can people see systems? Can they hear when people are talking to them? So there are lots of hurdles still to go over, but we think the virtual reality entertainment within a, within a plane could be a very, very good business opportunity. We use a virtual augmented reality for design within the KLM uh, and Air France as well. Um, a good example is we are moment, at the moment presently building a new headquarters Within, uh, within our city in Amsterdam. Uh, we have used virtual reality to enable the people who will be working in these offices to actually first go into these offices before they even build. So they can get used to it, and they can give us examples and, 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 uh, and design tips where we can change things before we actually build them really. So um, BIM or virtual augmented reality design is also a good opportunity for us. We're also, as I said, concentrating on internal digitalization. We train uh, at least 10,000 stewards and stewardesses per year using virtual reality. We call it cabin crew training. So literally you'll go into the environment, you'll get a headset on your head and you'll be able to train in a virtual plane. Uh, it, it, it's not a replacement for the traditional training, but it's an enhancement. It helps our colleagues uh, to get used to the system a lot quicker than actually going into a real plane and waiting for a, for a long time. This works very well. We're using augmented reality and artificial intelligence for predictive maintenance within ICT, information services. Uh, we have collected lots of data over the years, and now we're able to write algorithms which, in theory, boost our, our, our support process. Um, we take a little bit of the human aspect out of it. We'll still need people to, to make the decisions at the end of the line. But our artificial intelligence and augmented reality aspects within, within this chain, they, they help enormously. Uh, problem solving and change management. Um, uh, we use uh, machines as a service of Alexa and, and, and that sort of thing within our, within our process chains. Why? Um, in the, in the past, we had uh, if, if there was a big instance somewhere in the airline, people would phone in. They would all be connected to to a central war room, we call this, and they would uh, be informed of what the situation is and what's happening. Today, we're able to you be uh, utilizing virtual augmented reality and artificial intelligence. We're able to feed these systems, which automate the communication process within these escalation. Uh, situations. So this also works very well for us. Still in uh, in, in the early stages, we're something which we're really, really looking into at the moment. 
uh, big data uh, and quality control. Um, also using uh, virtual or augmented reality and artificial intelligence. A good example would be the way we um, um, the way we check our planes when they come back here from a flight. We use a lot of uh, cameras. They take pictures of when a plane comes in. They make a, a reference point. A plane looks like this now. It flies, takes its journey, comes back, and it will be checked again. Uh, um, and, and we can do this very quickly at the moment using cameras or airplanes. Still only on the outside, not in the engine here. Uh, usually in the past, we had people with torches or very good eyesight looking for for these discrepancies within the within the, uh, the environment, but at the moment we're automating that now, and that's that's still in an experimental phase, but it's, it's showing some uh, some progress. Uh, last but not least, low code and uh, and, uh, and uh, NLP. That's all. It's just literally uh, uh, artificial intelligence again. We have an issue um, uh, finding decent programs. So we've looked, we're looking at ways of maybe utilizing new skill sets, such as low code, to, to, uh, to get the things done which we need to do within the company, um, but also to be able to train um, other people to, uh, to build these applications for us. So we use low, low code for this sort of thing. Going back to that telepresence, what I was talking about, um, these are a few quick films um, of what we're actually doing. So this first one, which I'll, I'll show you, is an environment which we built in glue, um, uh, which we actually use. We use it daily, um, uh, and uh, we are very happy with it. This is the first one. So what you can see now is a presentation is being presented on the board with our own custom room. And we're able to go to, uh, to, uh, to a table and we talk. Uh, what, what's really important from this aspect is that Meeting in virtual reality feels like a natural conversation. Um, Dutch people, when they meet, they tend to talk a lot and they tend not to wait till the other person is finished before they interrupt. Using two dimensional um, uh, presentation of uh, two dimensional um, meeting methods at the moment, such as Zoom and Skype, it's not possible to do this because conversation gets lost in translation. Within virtuality, it's most definitely possible to do this. We've had meetings with 10 people in the room and it felt really, really natural within five minutes. These are very, uh, very good things. Uh, this, this, this is an enormous push for us. Of course, the technology is not there yet to do everything which we did in real life, face to face, but it's getting pretty close. Uh, this film is uh, another system, this is our own system which we built. As you can see, um, Zoom is based on uh, avatars, but these are based on 3D scans. This person which you're looking at now is literally, that, that's me. Of course, we have um, a little bit of uncanny valley in the thing. Um, and the room which you're looking at, or the room which I'm in at the moment, is a physical room. Literally, this room exists. We've actually modeled this room. And the outside, uh, if you've ever been to Amsterdam, you'll see that the outside is not looking at the moment, but it is Schiphol in Amsterdam. Um, we built the system together with TCS. Um, and it, it, it worked okay for an experiment. But at the moment, as I said, we're going back to, uh, to off-the-shelf products at the moment because we think they have uh, more, uh, more opportunities. Other, um, other uh, products which we're looking at as well. We're also looking at Engage, which is also a, a very interesting product, and Spatial. Spatial, from, from out its collaboration aspects, is very interesting for us. It's, it's a, it definitely the new Quest version. It's simple, um, and it, it seems to work okay. Uh, but uh, at the moment, these are, these are the, the, the things that we're looking at. So telepresence is going to be a very, very important thing for the AI. 
And of course, the question that comes up, which everybody says, is that the J, is that not a danger for your business? I think they could be right. But I think it's very important to get hold of this technology in the start and to see who, how that can enhance your own product. And maybe we have to deviate from our traditional business flying people from A to B. And maybe we have to, to offer other products. I don't know. But we are in the process of uh, analyzing this as we speak. Oh, oh OK. I'll just have to stop then. Um, OK, just one last sheet. Well, in a nutshell, that, that uh, was my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. And of course, if there are any questions, please uh, do not hesitate to contact me. I'm always uh, open for dialogue and questions and, and, and whatever. Um, it was exciting and fun to do this. Um, and I'm really curious to see how it, uh, how it translates. Thank you very much. And uh, be safe and look after yourself. Thank you. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, Jay, for that deep, you know, and broad uh, dive into to KLM and all the awesome work that you guys are doing in XR from, you know, VR to AR to assisted reality like telepresence. That was great to hear uh, the breadth of, of work you guys are doing there. Um, yeah. So we got a Very inter interesting times, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fascinating. And, and so, uh, we, we're a little over, but I figure, you know, why not get a couple questions in, even though, you know, I, th I think sure. technically the, uh, <laughs> the day is done. So um, we got a question from Jan, and she's asking, what AR platform does KLM use for its maintenance department? And obviously that, you know, so whatever you can, you can share. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, but I, I, I would love to be able to answer that question, but that's a, a different part of the company. <laughs> yeah, sure. We are information services and not uh, engineering and maintenance. So unfortunately, I can't, I can't give the right answer for that one. But I will look it up if you uh, send me the question. All right, no worries. Um, so one of the things you touched on that I was really excited to hear that you're actually doing was the entertainment side of things. And, uh, you know, back, gosh, it was probably like seven years ago, um, I was working at a company called ODG that did head-worn devices. And we, we were one of the first companies to present at Apex. And it was all around entertainment. And we were way, 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 way too early. But there was so much interest and excitement back then. And, um, you know, back then it was really for like viewing it for uh, private viewing for everything from work, you know, documents and being able to view entertainment things like uh, uh, movies and whatnot. Now, I know you touched on VR, but what do you see as like, number one, like the content that would be potentially being um, consumed on the plane? Or what are some of the uh, experiences you found that are the most effective? And do you think there's an opportunity for a, a see-through head-worn device as well to be used? Well, yeah, uh, I think if you look at the, how the technology is progressing at the moment, uh, I think um, you can have a hybrid device within a few years anyway, which will be, uh, which will, you, will, you will be able to set it up for virtual or augmented. Uh, you'll be able to phase it. Um, and I think, um, I think uh, these, these sort of uh, the technologies are, are, are fantastic. I'll tell you a story about um, a flight that took, I think, about a year ago. I was uh, I was in a in a plane flying to uh, I think it was to Las Vegas, um, and there were some children crying, and they were making quite a lot of noise in the in the in the cabin. And I gave them a go. I put a go on their head. I said, "This is a go. Go go and play with it." These kids were quiet for the rest of the journey. You know, they were they were occupied. It was good. It felt great. And 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 and. Uh, and you know, it, it, you see this, this the power the power of these of these uh, enclosed entertainment systems are really powerful. We also we're also looking at, uh, um, at other aspects as well. People were afraid of flying. You know, when you when you put uh, when you put a, a, a virtual reality uh, uh, glasses on your head, um, you be you're able to transport yourself into another world where it, it, you know you're you're less uh, you're less you have less fear. It it seems to work. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's an important experiment for us. Awesome. Um... 
And we have a question from Anish, and Anish is asking, do you use VR for training customer service agents on different situations, like an unhappy customer at a check-in desk or at a call center? Yes, this is uh, going, uh, well, it's something which we're experimenting with very heavily. Um, um, uh, because, uh, well, we're an airline at the moment, and we're, we're in shutdown almost. Eh? Uh, with, there yeah. are a few flights still going, but not a lot. And uh, we have a lot of uh, employees who still need to be trained, and they used to be trained in a classical way. The classical way has fallen now. It's not there anymore, so we have to find a virtual way to do this. And part of our training is, 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 is also in the cabin. How do you, how do you, um, how do you react with, with, with difficult customers? Uh, how do you react with customers who have health problems? What happens if you fall into the if the plane goes into the sea? How do you get all these customers together? We are looking at these sort of trainings very intensively at the moment within the KLM and Air France. Awesome. Um, well, I got one more quick one here from Philip. Uh, he's saying, what was the plane on his slide? There's no way it would fly in its current configuration. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now that's a, that's a prototype, a uh, prototype. It's uh, something we're doing with uh, the University of Delft here in, uh, in Holland. Um, we just think it's a really super sexy plane. And to be truthful, uh, we actually believe this plane can fly. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Oh, well, we, we believe in everything. <laughs> so, so Jay, uh, if, if we, I think there might be a, one or two questions I didn't get to here, but if you have any time um, and you get a chance to maybe uh, answer some of the questions in the message on the side, that'd be fantastic. And if anybody from the community wants to reach out to you, um, what, what are the best ways to contact you? Um, I think the best way to contact me personally is via, is via LinkedIn. Um, it's j.maloney at klm.com. Uh, that's my, uh, my, my address. Um, or you can also, uh, uh, via my uh, work email, the same address, uh, and then you can, uh, you can get hold of me. But I'll be hanging around here for, for the next two days anyway, so uh, virtually, of course. Right. Well, awesome, Jay. Thank you so much for your time today and great presentation. And, uh, you know, look forward to the day when I can actually get back on a KLM and uh, leave my, the comfort of my living room. <laughs> you know, you're not the only one. You know, this is, this is uh, what's it, almost quarter to one in, in the night for us at the moment. You know, I would prefer to be there in San Francisco, up in Santa Clara, drinking a nice cold beer outside then. Hey, me too. Me too. <laughs> okay. Look right. after yourself, huh? All right. Stay safe, huh? Cheers. Jay. See ya. Bye-bye.